Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be evaluating an infinite sum with complex numbers or with powers of i. Now if you're new to complex numbers go ahead and check out my lecture videos but quickly let me tell you that i is defined as the square root of negative one which is obviously not a real number. Okay so how do we find uh, sums of powers of i. Now, if you were given something like i plus i squared plus i to the third plus i to the fourth, then, you know, if it's an infinite sum, can we find it? Or if it's a finite sum, if it's a finite sum, you can easily find it, right? You can look at the pattern, they're going to cancel out in groups, and then you can find it if you know the last term. But if you don't, we don't really know what this is going to converge. In other words, this does not converge. Okay, it diverges, so there's no finite uh, answer. But in the case of uh, the original expression right here, we have convergence, and I'll show you uh, some stuff from, from Alpha if I for, did not forget to include it, of course. I probably did. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So what, are, what do these uh, denominators represent? 6, 12, 20, 30. What do you think? Well. The rule is not given clearly, but I'm hoping that you can uh, do, make some inferences from here, such as, for example, 6 can be written as 2 times 3, this can be written as 2 times 6, but this can be written as 2 times 10, so that doesn't seem to be a pattern. There is a pattern if you are familiar with triangular numbers. It, let's say you're not, okay? So we can also look at it differently, such as this. This is 2 times 3, this is 3 times 4, this is 4 times 5, and this is 5 times 6. So yes, these are 2 times the triangular numbers because they are the product of consecutive integers. And we do repeat them. In some patterns, we get 3 times 4 and then 5 times 6. We don't repeat any of the numbers. That's a different scenario, maybe in another video, if that's possible to do, of course. Uh, we, can, we can look at it. But in this problem, uh, we're going to be... Uh, using the consecutive powers like this. So how do we work this out? How do we arrive at something like this? That's the million dollar question, right? So here's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to consider, and I'm going to kind of go into the details a little bit because I need to tell you where that comes from. You hopefully know the geometric series formula, don't you? So suppose we have the following geometric series, 1 minus z plus z squared minus z cubed, where the common factor or a common, what is it called? The R, I think common ratio, is negative Z. And as you should know, if the sum converges, it does converge to 1 over 1 plus Z. Okay, here's where the trick starts. We're going to go ahead and take this expression and we are going to actually integrate it. Make sense? Okay, if we integrate it, what happens? Let's go ahead and make some room here maybe. So like this, we're going to move this a little bit this way. And then we're going to go ahead and just uh, add dz because it's with respect to z and integrate both sides. Now when you integrate on the left hand side, you get z minus z squared divided by 2 plus z cubed divided by 3 plus z to the fourth divided by 4, so on and so forth, right? It should be a minus sign there. So we get the coefficients 2, 3, 4, those are consecutive integers. But we don't get, we don't get the 2 times 3, 3 times 4, but that's okay, we're going to get there. So when you integrate on the right hand side, it just becomes ln, I'm just going to write it as 1 plus z, and then there's a constant, right? Now, here's the thing, if you replace z with 0, you're going to get a 0 on the left hand side, on the right hand side you're going to get ln1 plus c, but ln1 is also 0, which means c is 0, so you don't really need c actually, so forget about it, that's our sum. Can we just erase it? Let's do it, because I already told you where that comes from. So that's the, oops, I wasn't supposed to do it. so I pressed the wrong button, so this is our sum that, the sum that we're going to use, but again, I do need the product of consecutive integers, so why not why not? Why not take this expression and integrate it one more time? Let's do it. Because that's actually going to bring us closer to what we want. I'm not saying it's going to give us exactly, but let's do it. Uh, oops, I was supposed to move this cosine too. So let's go ahead and 
integrate both sides with respect to z and that'll give us and that'll give us the following if you integrate z you're going to get z squared divided by 2 if you integrate z squared you get z cubed divided by 3 you hopefully know the rule right it's the power rule but there's another coefficient 2 so it's going to be 2 times 3 and then we're going to have z to the fourth power divided by 4 times 3 that's going to be 3 times 4 and then we're going to get z to the fifth divided by 5 times 4 or 4 times 5 and then this gives you the consecutive integers that you're looking for. Of course, there's a two here, which we don't want, but don't worry, we'll take care of that in a little bit. But then the million dollar question is maybe half a million, right? How to integrate this expression? So let's go ahead and integrate that first, and we're gonna come back to this. So to integrate it, I'm gonna use integration by parts. You can also use the UV or what, what is that called? Um, UD method, I forgot, anyway, something like that. Uh, I think DI, yes. The high method. Anyways, so we're going to call this u and we're going to call this dv and you should know the following formula. The integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. And guess what? This comes from the product rule and just integrate both sides and you'll get it. Now, here what happens is u equals ln1 plus z. We should find du from here, which is 1 over 1 plus z dz. We just differentiate it. And then if the dv is dz, then you just integrate and you get v equals z. Don't worry about the constant. You don't need it right now because we'll add that at the end if needed. So we're going to go this way and then that way. And of course, there's going to be a minus sign in between because of this. Make sense? So integral of ln 1 plus z dz is equal to uv, which is z times ln 1 plus z minus z over z plus 1. Let me write it that way because that's a little easier. And this one. So we're going to integrate the second part. And so the, find the integral or to integrate this function, we need to integrate another function. But that function is actually very easy to integrate with a little trick. You can go ahead and there's a couple of things you can do here. If you want, you can call this like t and then find dt. This will be t minus 1. Either that or you can use uh, a little trick like z plus 1 minus 1 and then it'll split it up into two fractions like 1 minus 1 over z plus 1 and when you integrate each piece you get z and ln one more time. And we can just probably write it as z plus 1. I don't think we need the absolute value here. And there is a constant that comes up but do we really need that? Let's just put k here because we used the c before. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug it in here, but there's going to be another minus sign, double minus, that's going to turn into a plus sign. So to keep a long story short, the integral of ln 1 plus z dz is equivalent to z ln z plus 1 and then minus z plus ln z plus 1 plus k. It's actually a minus k, but don't worry about it. It's the same type of thing, constant. So... That's my integral, but it's at the same time equal to the left-hand side, right? So these two things are equal. But that's not what I'm looking for, right? So I, I should be careful. So what should I do from here? So here's what I got so far. Let me just write it down as a summary. We have z squared divided, oops, z squared divided by 2 minus z cubed divided by 6 plus z to the fourth divided by 12. I'm just multiplying them uh, over 20 dot 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 is equal to this integral right here. But that's not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to do the following. Factor out z squared. And then you're going to get this. Does that look familiar? Hopefully. We're getting closer. Right? And then this is equal to that. Again, this whole thing. Don't forget. We're talking about the whole thing. I'm going to divide both sides by z squared. Okay? So 1 half minus z over 6 plus z squared over 12 minus z cubed over 20 dot 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 is equal to z ln z plus 1 plus ln z plus 1. I'm going to write that first. Minus z plus k all over z squared. Is that the answer? Well, not really. Because we still need to get rid of the 1 half. So we're going to separate 1 half from both sides. That's going to give us negative z over 6 plus z squared over 12 minus z cubed over 20, dot, dot, dot. And then it'll be equal to z ln z plus 1 plus ln z plus 1 
minus z plus k divided by z squared minus one half. And finally, the sum that we're looking for starts with z over six, because remember, it was i over six minus i squared over 12, so on and so forth. So I do need to negate both sides, which is multiplied by negative one. So z over six minus z squared over 12 plus z cubed over 20 minus z to the fourth over 30, dot, 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 is gonna equal the following. One half minus z ln z plus one plus ln z plus one minus z plus k divided by z squared. Ta-da! Now, if you replace z with i, you're gonna get the answer. And good luck with that, because this sum is gonna give you what you're looking for. And the right-hand side actually is more important. So it's gonna be like one half minus i ln i plus one plus ln i plus one or one plus i minus i plus k divided by i squared, which is negative one by the way. So you can kind of negate it, add one, make a common denominator, so on and so forth. Let's take a look at what this is gonna look like because Wolfram Alpha already did the work for me and for you too. So this should be the final answer. And yes, that infinite sum, because it converges, is finite. It is actually a complex number, which we can express as a plus pi. What's the name of the channel? A plus bi. Well, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.